My name is Ted Hazard. I'm a documentary filmmaker. I have many creative influences. But of all my aesthetic heroes, none stand out so distinctly as two filmmakers similar to me in spirit, James J. Butler and Charles Austin Muir, co-directors of The Unbearable Lightness of Crashing. I remember how I felt when I watched their award-winning microfilm play on the big screen. It was like a zen lightning flash of everything I'd loved as a child. It captured the sense of play from those dreamy bell-bottom days. Thirty seconds of the strangest catharsis I had ever known. But the story of the film's creation is even stranger. Later on, I learned that Butler and Muir filmed it as a joke with nothing but old iPhones and iMovie. Yet that too inspired me. Thanks to Butler and Muir, I began making my own short films with minimal equipment and cinematic knowledge. Indeed, my idols were even considering financing one of my projects when they walked away from the festival circuit at the height of their success. You can learn about their ill-fated career move in my short film, Death in 60 Seconds. All you need to know now is, I caught up with Butler when I attended his photography exhibition last year in New York City. Although he would not admit it, I could tell he missed his partnership with Muir from the nostalgia that suffused his work. Knowing these men had been friends for 40 years, I suspected that Muir must miss it too. It turned out I was spot on. Their sadness gave me the opening I needed to attempt a sequel to Death in 60 Seconds, a story of brotherhood, creativity, and maybe, just maybe, a comeback. The unbearable lightness of crashing was filmed at this cabin outside of Tillamook, near the Oregon coast. What began as a parody of avant-garde cinema propelled James J. Butler and Charles Austin Muir to stardom. It screened at festivals around the world and was hailed as a stunning achievement with echoes of Antonioni and the German Neuevelle by film historian Stephen Alford. Butler and Muir quickly rose to the top of a mobile filmmaking movement divided between macabre nihilism and pop culture-powered absurdism. Rather than coast on their success, however, they went right back to work fresh from their European tour, and shortly before the pandemic known as COVID-19, Butler and Muir shot a sequel about a Christmas threatened by a mysterious global disease. Sadly, Silent Night, Evil Night delivered as much holiday cheer as a stocking full of coal. For reasons they've never explained, Butler and Muir halted post-production to release an expanded edition of the unbearable lightness of Crashing. Over twice the length of the theatrical release, the butler Muir cut, or simply the BM cut, betrayed the growing tensions between the co-directors as they clashed over impossible ambitions. Tragically, the minute-long mess not only bombed at the box office, it destroyed a lifelong friendship. For me, this was as unbearable as the lightness that made their original film so enchanting. So, with my partner, the butler to my muir, or the muir to my butler, depending on whom you ask, I set out to see if I could heal the wounds 
which the BM cut had inflicted. It took a lot of driving and emailing, not to mention a weekend at Muir Strength Camp, but eventually, my persistence paid off. This is a really cool Airbnb. It's funny. I'm nervous. You've got them both in town, and I'm ready to speak. Will they take the bank? The whole film depends on. So, where do we begin? Hmm. Well, uh, my name is Charles Austin Muir. I was a writer and filmmaker. I'm currently a personal trainer, working on an app, and I've got a YouTube channel, Muir Strength Camp. Check it out. Oh, uh, my relationship with James. Uh, well, uh, James and I, we uh, were childhood friends, uh, grew up in the same neighborhood, went to the same school, uh, we were altar boys, went down separate career paths, uh, but eventually came back together and we kind of accidentally stumbled into filmmaking, made a few movies together, uh, The Unbearable Lightness of Crashing, which screened at several film festivals, uh, and then we made a sequel to that that uh, still hasn't come out. And then an extended version of The Unbearable Lightness of Crashing. That, that didn't go so well. Anyway, um, where, where were we? What would I say to James if I... Uh, oh, well. Hey, man. I got nothing. Do you think that he would talk to me? How? <laughs> really? I mean, uh, excuse me. I mean, if you can arrange it, I, let me let me let me think about it. Uh, well, no, just just see what you can do. Well, I think that went pretty well. Looks like Charles is in. Oh, we good. You were strength camp.
Hey. Yeah, thanks for the invitation. Yeah, it's, uh, it's a good location. Yeah, it feels good to get out. Oh, yeah, so I really appreciate the invitation coming out and, uh, and getting a chance to, to chat with you all. So, um, and I mean, it's none of my business, but it's kind of warm out here. You're going to wear that the whole time? <laughs> That's cool. Yeah, to each his own. Yeah, so what would you like to talk about? Where do you want to start? I'm um, sure. Yeah, I'm going to get that question a lot, right? So, um, so, you know, I uh, had some success back in those days with uh, with Unbearable and uh, you know filmmaking and uh, and all the work we did with with Charles and Mini Evil and stuff. And uh, um, but it's been good to to you know step away from that a bit and 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 go off in a different creative direction right now. I've been working on for a while and I'm um, traveling around. I'm on the road quite a bit. You know, I'm doing my photography. Um, yeah, you know, like I said. You know, doing the photography stuff, I'm trying, you know, still find my voice a little bit, I feel like, and I'm, I'm going to some different directions. Um, but I'm but I'm really, you know, finding some 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 good creative energy. And, and what what's that? You know, I, you know. All right. You know, fine. I know we can. I know people like to hear those stories and, and uh, we can go there again. Um, but um, yeah, you know, like we like I said, you know, like, you know, Charles and I. We had some great times together back then, and and uh, and with with uh, with many evil, and um, you know, you know, and things just we just had we just got to have creative differences. You know how these things go, right? I mean, but you know, I'm sure he's doing great, and and uh, you know, I'm doing my thing. And what what's that? Really? He's, you talk to him, and he's he's interested in meeting with me again. You know, really? <sighs> wow. You know, I, I gotta say this, the whole thing you're wearing is really kind of distracting. Like, do you really have to wear that? All right, all right fine. Uh, wow, this is like, that's a big thing to drop on me. And he, he came to you, like you're bringing this to me. He didn't bring this to me? Like, I don't understand. This is why you're all here, right? This is really why you're here. Of course. Wow. And, he, and what did he say? Really, he's... He's interested in meeting with me again. Wow. Wow. Yeah, I'm sorry. I can't. I can't. Uh, I can't answer that right now. I just, I gotta, I'm sorry. James talked to us for over two hours. Honestly, it was kind of a mess. He started out nervous and became increasingly agitated. I think he'll come around though. He was supposed to call. Yeah, yeah. Whatever. This is my unbearable poster. I was hoping to get them both to sign it. I don't think that's going to happen now. And my phone died. James. 
देख रहे हैं JK, JK, hello, he's in. So you should be getting a confirmation email for your admission to Muir Strength Camp. Great, Charles. And by the way, James has confirmed he's willing to meet with you tomorrow. Tomorrow? You serious? We're stuck in the in-between Can't speak for you, but it's killing me I'm trying hard to let it be We can see I've been waffling But if he called and said sorry Would you pack your things and leave? Cause I'm me The only person Charles were kids. It's funny how some things don't change. Some things do. If we would have known back then that we'd be so nervous seeing him again. Wow. This brings back memories. nervous and only known the guy my whole life what time is it again oh I think that's is it I think I just ah man I think I just saw him. Dude. Dude. He just went right by. I have no idea where he's going. All right. How long it's been. Great to be back here again. If I go back and reread on. Which is why it's so hard to go But I'm losing
seems to want to work on something again i think yeah it was you know it, it, it felt good it did it did you know i was nervous you know there was a lot said back then you know and with the the drinking and everything you know and we and we just in my mind it's kind of too big you know you know like like the whole bm cut and all that stuff and it was you know it was, it was a fun idea but it was it was just it just got too out of hand you know, it's not, it's not why, why we got into this. Well, after all our dogged efforts with Butler and Muir, my partner and I had the pleasure of watching two of our favorite filmmakers return to their roots. In fact, we were so excited to witness their creative rebirth that we forgot to recharge our phones before shooting them at work. Or should I say... Play. Fortunately, they lent us some of the footage they shot on that warm summer day with the sun setting and the air pregnant with cottonwood fluff. Watching them collaborate without a phone framing my view, I soon forgot myself as a documentary filmmaker and felt transported into the world of childhood again. The early evening rang with cheers and the wail of a wind-up gear stunt bike. By the end, I realized that these two best friends had been torn asunder by extraordinary artistic pressures in the film industry. Yet, thanks in part to my design, here they were again, boys in middle-aged bodies, reveling in the freedom to create for the joy of it. And it hit me. These men didn't have to make another film. They didn't have to make a comeback. The praise, the laurels, those things had never really mattered. For James J. Butler and Charles Austin Muir, simply being with each other, playing around with evil, was enough. I can be 